All right, guys, it is finally time to go on our first drive, or at least the first recorded drive, because I've driven this thing a few times and worked out a few kinks before we got here. But this is going to be the first drive that you guys are going to get to see on my Aviator four valve swap 2003 Mustang GT. So let's get into today's video. All right, as you guys can see, I look totally different than I did in the uh, intro of this video and that's because I recently found out that I'm totally trash at building engines now I'm totally trash at recording videos so I recorded the entire first drive video with the trashiest audio you could ever dream about that thing was absolute garbage I had the wrong cord in the phone that's recording the audio from the mic and we just got the worst audio known to man. So now this is going to be the first drive video, part two <laughs> or take two I should say. From that little pull you guys can tell this thing is running like a bat out of hell. Um, we still need to finish the toning process, but for right now, I absolutely love where this build is at. No bunch of smoke behind us while we're driving, no engine noises, uh, no ticks, no knocks, no bangs. <laughs> you guys gotta cross your fingers on that one. But for right now, she sounds absolutely beautiful. Um, I was having a belt squeak issue and also a release bearing issue on the first drive So I am grateful that I got those things sorted out before we started this uh, drive here But for right now um, If I had to think about it, I would say that this needs to be uh, like I said finish tuning and um, Probably change the top on this the drop top because it has a bunch of holes in the back of it and I'm just gonna park this thing for a little while and just try to enjoy the fact that it's running and driving with no issues. So, oh, I also had to change my radiator. I had to put a different radiator in it. The, the big radiator I had was clogged shut. Maybe a lot of crap came out of the engine because it was sitting up in the junkyard and it completely clogged that radiator shut. So um, that's an aluminum radiator. We would have to cut that open with a welder uh, to get that to um be cleared out so i'm not gonna go that route i just um i had a radiator that someone took out of their car that had a pinhole in it and i patched it up slapped it back on the car and now here we are driving the thing so i'm having no issues with that but other than that my second gear is doing exactly what it always does grinds like hell but i for the first time in a long time, I just, like I said, enjoying this thing. It, it's running so well. <laughs> oh man, I'm not even supposed to be beating on it like this. I'm actually just supposed to be taking it easy, but I think we all know that uh, once your car shows you that it's performing or shows you that it's being behaved properly, you just want to get on it and uh, find the next problem or find the next issue that you're having with it. And like I said, so far, I'm not having any issues out of this thing, except for my seatbelt trying to choke the hell out of me. But cross our fingers that we don't have to keep working on this thing all day and night and we just get to freaking enjoy this goddamn 2003 Mustang GT with a four valve motor in it from a 2005 Lincoln Aviator. This gearbox feels a whole lot better now that I put the 410 gears in the rear end of this thing. It just makes the car feel all around more peppy, uh, makes the gears feel shorter, and makes you feel like you have a lot more torque um, out of your motor. I'm watching my AFR gauge. I'm also gonna set up my gauges on my SCT X4 so I can watch the temps, uh, watch the throttle position, um, and just pretty much all around make sure that everything is going right with the motor and that we don't have any issues 
I really need to get a mount for this thing, like one of those ones that you put up on the windshield so that I don't have to keep um, holding it in my hand or looking down to check at it. Woo! I love the pops and bangs. I know, I know it means that you have unburned fuel, but sounds so good. As you guys can see, 176 on the coolant temps. Uh, battery looks good, 13.6 on the voltage. Injectors have 40 pounds of pressure across all injectors. And uh, throttle position looks perfect. So I don't have to look, keep looking at that. Um, I drove this thing a few times, actually before I even recorded this video or the video before this one where I messed it up. And um, each time the car just got better and better and better. And this drive right here feels so good because no overheating issues, no throttle issues, no issues with the clutch, no issues with uh, pretty much anything on the car. And before, like when I had the motor that I put together that I gapped the rings for, we used to have a good much, a good bit of smoke like trailing behind us and I never liked it. I always thought that something was wrong with it. I thought that the motor was just breaking in, but uh, I'm, I'm guessing the motor always had a fault or some issue with it. And to be able to drive this thing around and not have any issues is uh, so much of a blessing. Oh, there goes that welded diff chirping away. Man, an angle kit and a welded diff can really get you some some good angles, but man, it does not want to turn. <laughs> not unless you're sliding. Alrighty, I just was checking to make sure that I did not make the same mistake that I did before and was it recording recording the audio properly but I just checked it, we're fine. And um, one thing I noticed, a tip that I picked up from watching YouTube videos is that you would, you would watch a YouTube video that doesn't have very good video quality, but the audio was good. Like there wasn't a bunch of wind in the audio and you could fully understand what the person was saying. And um, that's also like a tip and trick that I got from watching videos that suggested that people would stay on to videos um, just for good audio. And that's why I had to record this video over. And um, the, the first set of footage was very good, but the audio just, uh, it, was, it was lacking so much. And um, I really love the feel of being able to hear what the person is saying, um, other than having like 4K, 8K video, and then the audio is just straight wind noise, and then you could barely hear what they're saying. So I'm gonna put a, a much greater emphasis on making sure that my videos are recorded properly and making sure that I take my time and edit them properly as well. So, so far so good. No, like I said, no overheating, no oil pressure issues. Um, I also, I don't have any water leaks and any air leaks. I don't have any uh, oil leaks as well. So if everything goes well on this drive, I don't see why we can't continue the tuning process to get the tone on this thing perfect because it's not perfect yet we still have like a like a slight dead spot underneath 3000 rpm it feels like it I, I don't know if you guys know what i mean but if you got if you drive sports cars it just feels like your balls aren't there it's like oh uh, it has horsepower but the torque is lacking if you know what i mean so it doesn't have much down low torque but it does have a lot of a um, horsepower boost so Anything above 3000 RPM, the thing screams and continues to run. So I don't have any issues with that. I just want to make sure that the tone on this thing is perfect. And I want to make sure that the tone is set up for longevity and not just, you know, being able to beat the brakes off it for like a month or two. And then the thing just constantly breaks after that. So I have to get in contact with my toner. My toner is one of the best guys that I know. Um, he is Tony at Toners Inc. in Orange Park, Florida. Uh, I hope I'm not messing that up, but it's Toners Inc. Make sure to check him out if you guys need any toning. He sends me a file. I put the file on this, on the SCT X4, and then I just flash it to the computer and I'm good to go. We just do that back and forth until the thing gets perfect and then we stop. We stop.
just trying to cruise through this residential area. I don't want to be speeding next to any homes. Um, and I think as a community, when it comes to speeding or when it comes to racing or anything to do with performance, we should be very, very mindful when it comes to um, making sure that we keep people safe, other people safe when we want to speed and when we want to uh, just enjoy our hobbies. this car causes me a good bit of grief man i love this car so much guys don't ever get it twisted and think that oh his car keeps breaking is you know it is not an enjoyable thing it it really isn't enjoyable if you can't drive the car but even when my motor broke and i was in the process of finding a motor i was so happy and, and it's so weird because i was just happy that i was able to work on it you know so i think working on cars is going to be something that I'm probably going to do, even when I have the money to fully build a motor, I'm just going to be, you know, chilling, enjoying it, sitting by the shop, you know, tearing some heads off, putting some stuff together. That, that, just tinkering with a motor or tinkering with a car that you like or that, or that piques your interest is just so fun to me. Whew, those Max Peating Rod coilovers were really showing why they were 256 bucks just now. They were making so much noise. Click, 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 click. You could hear them like uh, pushing while I was going over all those rumbles. But right now, we've just been pushing the hell out of the car and the car is sitting at 184 temp. So I know I don't have any overheating issues anymore. Man, that second gear, I'm sure sooner than later, that's gonna just go. When it does, I'll probably pull the box uh, change the flywheel clutch and pressure plate. I have a Mustang GT 4.6 two valve clutch setup, so that's flywheel clutch, pressure plate, everything. I'm gonna put probably a Cobra setup in it, which is um, gonna handle more power, gonna have a better clamping force, and just all around gonna feel much better. But this thing, this thing is freaking driving great. I noticed that wide open throttle, I'm having an AFR, air to fuel ratio of about 12, 5, 13, 2. So I think we're gonna probably make it a bit richer, but I'm not sure. I'm not I'm not a tuner, I'm just guessing because I think uh, you want your AFRs between 11.5 and 12.5, but that's probably for a boosted motor. I don't know what it's supposed to be at wide open throttle for a naturally aspirated uh, 4.6 dual overhead cam but it feels great can't complain at all and the best part about the tune is it's not just tuned for wide open throttle right now I am cruising at about 1500 RPM and my AFRs, my air to fuel ratio is like 15 five. So it's nice and lean. You're not gonna burn too much fuel while you're cruising. And then the minute you wanna get into it and uh, beat the brakes off of it, it's right there and the power is ready to go. I don't know about you guys, but I would say that was a very, very successful third or fourth drive, but first drive for you guys.
All right, I think it is needless to say that this thing is performing absolutely insanely well. Um, the release bearing is extremely annoying, but I'm not gonna strip this thing down just to deal with that just yet. I'm gonna get myself a flywheel clutch pressure plate and then I'm gonna tear this whole thing down and do it again and change everything, pop that. Um, I'm probably gonna change that fork and pretty much change with everything in that system. And um, I know that the cable is good. That is a Ford cable uh, from the factory. And I don't have to worry about that going bad anytime soon. As long as you install those and you put oil in the, in the cable casing itself, you should be good for a long period of time. What people do is they just grab them out of the bag and install them and then they go bad fairly easy because the cable rides on the casing very, very hard. But as you guys have just heard, this thing runs like a bat out of hell. I, the only issue I really have with this thing is I need to get it finished tuned. I was in the process of tuning when this thing broke, so now I need to finish the tune and let the guy finish doing his thing because I still have a little bit of lack of power down low, but anything above 3000 RPM, this thing carries on like an absolute animal. But that is it guys, that is our first drive video on this Aviator Swap Mustang GT. I thank you guys so much for watching. Don't forget to like, share, and subscribe. And always remember, don't drift without your dreams, and I'll catch you guys on the next one.